where did this start? Was it music or was it an idea? Like, where's the, the starting point for this project, this idea? So with all of my film projects, I, I come from the theater. So I always um, do a performance version of it. And sometimes it's in development for several years. This one was in development for, I would say, around six to seven months. Was the rehearsal process, the stage performance, and then further development. And then from there, the choreography was created, and then the film was made. (laughs) How much of that initial work is adherent to what we see in the final product? So for behalf, the actress, Christine Tatomer, was the same actress, um, the blonde character. Um, And some of the choreography maintained, but you know, it's interesting. It's like for me, the work is very subtle. Like I have to work with her for a very long time to sort of develop a sort of uh, you know, there are subtle choreographies that are involved. Um, so I would say that carried over. The, the acting work that we we developed um, definitely carried over. But then because I set it in the interior space, I wanted to work with the domestic space um, in a house, that was definitely the difference. That su- suddenly it was about this living room, bathroom situation, as opposed to being on stage, off stage, as we did it in the original performance. I know it really doesn't matter where the house is, but I'm curious where the house is. Where the house is? Yeah. It was shot in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, the the color of the shoot, not just the, like, I love the backdrop behind her, but can you talk about the aesthetic, the visual look you were trying to go for? Because I do feel there's a, I mean, she comes across very much like a muse, like it's very mm-hmm. ethereal. Mm-hmm. Was that always kind of the idea or what was your hope visually? So I wanted to work with this archetype of um, like white female leads in cinema, capital C cinema, right? So I was looking at movies from the 30s and the 40s, but I wanted the time period to be sort of, you know, like ambiguous, like it's just cinematic, but you can't really say what it is. It's sort of like, you know, you look at um, lead, like women from Fassbender films. It's like there is a certain quality to it. Like we were looking at a lot of also um, Marlena Dietrich videos. That's who I thought of. Really? Oh, I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, so it's sort of like this really performative femininity. And with the colors, I wanted to accentuate that with these like soft blush tones in the back and her... um, yeah, this like dress that could be gaudy, but also not, you know, it could be glamorous and sort of the in-between spaces there. And then we enter the, the bathroom. I don't want to give away that's all that's going on, <laughs> but like the aesthetic, the feel of the bathroom is so different. Um, it's jarring. It's lovely. I love it. Can you talk about um, the complete separation of those two rooms, I feel like? Yeah. Um, I'm really interested in this, you know, I think in all my work, I'm really interested in this fiction and reality uh, dynamic, onstage, offstage selves. And then I was like, if I were to put this in a house, how could that translate, right? And how can we, you know, be like, this is onstage and this is backstage. And then I was thinking about it, you know, the living room, the sort of parlor space is such a presentational space. It's like, you know, um, you see it in a lot of movies. It's like this, like, dinner party or, you know, it's... So in terms of um, the film, in talking about race, it's also like this sort of living room where, like, the white presentational characters are existing and performing. And then the bathroom... um, you know, it's a private space, and it's also sort of like, you know, this the literal like sewage of the of the it's house. Where the business gets done. It's where the business gets done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay, so what I thought in my head was Downton Abbey, upstairs, downstairs, <laughs> same quality though to some extent, the hidden and the seen. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to get back to the theater program. How, 
how long have you been in theater? And, and Sorry, before we move on, back to that I want to just, uh, to your point um, about Downton Abbey, yeah, I never wanted it to be like, you know, in, you know, the white people are in the living room and the colored people are in the bathroom, like th- this is where they should belong, right? It's not necessarily about that. I think I wanted also this bathroom space to be sort of surreal and like time doesn't, you know, function in the same way and okay. that have it be sort of like this this is actually where the power lies like this is where like the the strings if you know of the puppet this is where the puppet master exists in so where the wizard is in the wizard of Oz. yeah so that it's not so the, the dynamics are never so clear that like it's like one space has power and one doesn't it's always this sort of interchangeable play between the two of like it's very complicated so there's no clear answer you know and they know each other's acknowledgement right because i feel like she knows them and they obviously yeah are aware of her yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay very yeah. cool thank yeah. you for that that clarity yeah yeah sorry to cut you off I'm, no i love yeah. that um so I, i'm curious the mingling of the genres from theater into the different work and like looking back at like uh the the short uh street street performer was it called that street, street angel street, street angel. angel i don't know why performer came in ahead but translating genres and material what is that like for you do you is that a process you enjoy is that something you want to continue to do um because it's really cool to see it thank you yeah Yeah, um i would say that i don't know i've been getting this question about genre a lot recently and i think it's interesting um i think my work sometimes is hard to categorize and I kind of like it that way you know it's hard for you know the market but it's and for programming but it's also I I like that it's you know the nature of my work is sort of in between spaces and it's called experimental yeah it's yeah and also multidisciplinary um (laughs) doc likes to hear things (laughs) but um I think that you know, for me, it's the it's always the the music or the concepts that inspire me. So that, however, it's like the project dictates what it wants to be, you know. Um, and I like working with actors and non-actors in this way for a very long time before something emerges. So the the the. Uh, the journey from like a public street performance or like a theatrical performance or something in a gallery and then transitioning into a film or you know or i don't know a re- a, an audio recording is is na- feels very natural to me so i don't really think about it that much does that mean you already know what your next few projects are have they already been dived into deeply that way yeah i would say so so i've been working on this um ongoing project that i see as the last film of this trilogy it's this trilogy about chinatown and the last one is actually a road trip film where i've been driving through the south and interacting with different people and interviewing um queer activists and immigrants and different women that i've met along the way and um yeah, and it's sort of my American road trip movie. <laughs> How cathartic or impactful is this trilogy for you personally, completing it? I think it will, it will be the culmination of me exploring these ideas for a very long time. You know, this sort of performing the character, um, performing these sort of cinematic archetypes, this these working with these oriental, like, you know, iconographies, um, which I've been exploring for quite a few years now. I hope it will be cathartic at the end of it. We will see. <laughs> You're amongst it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, speaking of, of getting to travel through it, what has your experience been like with uh, the film festival circuit for you and being in a place like Oxford? What does it mean to you? What, what it, how have you experienced it so far? I really love being here. I think the reason, um, one of my favorite things about working in film um, rather than 
theater or a live performance is that you know it really can travel to a more diverse audience so this is super important to me the fact that we're sitting here and talking is means a lot to me the fact that I can you know we just screened it this afternoon and there was a wonderful Q&A that um, was led by John Rash and then we had a lot of um, audience just incredible audience questions and there was a wonderful conversation that followed so that was I mean that's that's why I'm here that's why I make films you know it's about these conversations that I think it's not just about making work in a void for your friends or, you know, for me personally. <laughs> but can you expand on that? I love that. Getting to be here with other filmmakers. Have other filmmakers do the Q&As like the great Mr. John Rash. We know him very well. Yeah. He himself knows what you've been through. Yeah. It's, it's fitting. Yeah. It feels actually crazy because you know it's so hard to make a film it's so hard to be you know an independent filmmaker it's so hard to work in also a genre like experimental filmmaking where there's not much funding or it's it's difficult to you know it's not it's not the linear path yeah. so you're fighting to get the work done and a lot of the time you're self-funding and it's it's just also very lonely to be an artist you know um, so to be here amongst other filmmakers and other artists and to be in conversation actually feels like this is insane like I'm here you know this project didn't get thrown into the trash which so many I was so close to so many times and then we're actually here showing it and um, in Mississippi Surreal, isn't it? Surreal. It's amazing. But to be in Mississippi and to show my film this afternoon and then to have everyone in the audience, I mean, like, to reflect back to me the themes of my film, they completely, you know, like, there were there were so many, like, it wasn't, like, interesting comments, like, everyone had a different take. It was almost like everyone got what I was going for across the board. So that is amazing to me <laughs> in, you know, Mississippi and where I'm not from and yeah so that's incredible um when are you hoping to do this final trilogy moment when are you looking to film when am i looking to your do next it? one yeah this oh, my next one. so i've been filming this for uh since 2016 so it's been this is the seventh year that i've been and i think i'm gonna try to finish it this year wow can yeah. i ask where you've been i don't want you to give away anything but i'm just curious um, I've driven through parts of West Virginia and Tennessee, Kentucky, along the Appalachian Trail a little bit. Um, yeah, I would say mostly those places. I've, I've, I've gone back and forth. Not a lot of Americans have even seen that. Can you articulate why? What What is it about that part of the world you want to bring your vision to? I think it's fascinating. Well, you know, so I in 2016 was living in New York City um, and I was in a crowd of artists, liberal, you know, art, artists. <laughs> and um, you know, after the, the presidential election and the sort of like divisive language that was going on at the time, um, I felt that I was in a bubble. I was living in a bubble of New York City um, and the life that I had. And I was hearing all of this like rhetoric about like what the South was and what the red states were. And, you know, you as an Asian woman, as an immigrant, you're not going to be allowed to go through those states like you wouldn't be welcome there you wouldn't feel safe right so I was hearing these things and then I was like okay so you're saying these things you're saying you know probably the south is poor the south is uneducated the south is bigoted and I'm not allowed to go through these places because of how I look so let me go through and see what happens <laughs> So then I decided to drive alone and just sort of travel through. So that was the input, that was the original impulse of why I wanted to do it. And then along the way, I met so many incredible people. I was completely, I guess I wasn't proven wrong because I didn't think this way, but it was like every, all the stuff that I was hearing was completely proven wrong. I met 
Yeah, I met immigrants. I met incredible, incredible activists along the way. People welcomed me into their homes, you know. Um, I met artists along the way. And it was just... And then also I felt like me moving through these spaces was very interesting for me. And I didn't, it wasn't interesting in the way that I thought um, it would be interesting. Like I didn't necessarily feel, um, I never felt unsafe, you know. It was like all of the preconceived notions that I had going into it were completely just destroyed as I was doing it and then all of these other very interesting things started emerging and so that was the beginning and then I kept going back because I was you know interested in continuing these these conversations and now I look back and I'm like wow it's been seven years in the making <laughs> that's fascinating though and you said it took time to do the first two so now it makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. Um, gosh that's fascinating um, last question, uh, another fun one. What are you reading? What are you watching? Anything that you want to share with us? Wait, I want to say one more thing about the last thing. Sorry, I'm like having a delayed reaction to all your questions. That makes but, me feel great. It's really good. I mean, my questions are decent. <laughs> um, I work quite a bit in folk music, so I spend a lot of time um, researching and studying and traveling to Eastern European countries and post-Soviet countries to study the folk music there. And being Chinese, I have an interest in, you know, what makes a folk song. So along this path also, I. I was interviewing a lot of musicians along the way and um, dive quite a bit into the folk song, the folk music of, of Appalachia and that also is an interesting factor in this in this project. This Between that and the blues, you're talking the oldest musical lineage of American culture. Yeah, of American culture, and then musically speaking, the the where the music sits actually is very similar to a lot of music from you know from the East. Yeah. So I find that connection really fascinating. Um, so that also has been a through line with this project and a through line with the other two projects with We Have and Street Angel, which is our two films are, you know, revolved around music and a song. So cool. <laughs> um, wow. Now I kind of want to ask about your passport now that you've been <laughs> everywhere. Um, wh where's the most fascinating place you visited then, if you don't mind me asking? Fascinating place. Yeah, for any reason. Um... I don't know. I mean, I spent some time in the Republic of Georgia learning in songs. Europe. Not Georgia next door to us, but no. the Republic yes. of Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was definitely a very interesting trip. Yeah. In wow. a <laughs> that I feel like I was, when I was there, I was like, oh, this is really, I f this feels very far away from home. Yeah. So cool. Um, Gosh, I, I feel like I can ask a bunch of questions, but I, I, I'd love to kind of um, end it with you. What is next for you step by step for your projects? I know you want to get to the next one, but do you have anything down the line that you're getting ready more recently or anything like that that you can tell us about? Hmm. With behalf? With anything. Behalf, um, well, with behalf, it's so fresh. So we'll see what emerges in the next few weeks. You know, we're waiting to hear back from other festivals and I'm hoping that it will show in sort of art spaces as well. Yeah. Um, with Street Angel, it's streaming online, so that mm -hmm. is easily accessible now. And um, I would say with Street Angel, it's interesting. Um, did you see Street Angel? I did, yeah. Thank you so much for watching yeah. that. Um, I would say that that one has recently become more interesting to me, that, that film. Um, it was completed in 2020 before the pandemic and I actually watched it on the big screen the other week for the first time I think probably since then or in two years and it really hit me in a different way um, now with I think you know with all the recent like anti-Asian uh, violence and with the recent re recent shooting it's it's a di and now it's a different reads as a different film for me to to be walking through these 
you know, with, through this Chinatown spaces and, and as a Asian American walking through spaces safely. And so I don't know. So now I'm sort of like in a very recent way been more fascinated with that film and people's reactions of it. So hopefully both Street Angel and Behalf will be, will be shown. I wish and now I had maybe seen it earlier. Yeah. I only recently, like last week, right, right, to get prepped right, for this. So right. I wish I'd seen it in its original intention because I'm now impacted by the world we live in. Right, so yeah. So I may have looked at it differently, or my view of it. That's fascinating. Yeah, that is fascinating. <laughs> Well, I've, I've loved our chat. I um, yeah. was kind of blown away by your attention to detail in your work. And thank you for bringing it to Oxford. I think this is an audience that has the ability to embrace something like this that's different and beautiful in a different way. Yeah. Thank you so much. I so enjoyed our talk. And thank you so much for all the wonderful questions.